Hello and welcome to the Hairdresser Strong Show. We talk with hairstylists from all different backgrounds, hearing their experiences and perspectives about career-defining topics important to rising and transforming hairdressers. I'm your host, Robert Hughes, and this is my guest, Alejandro Jimenez. Please introduce yourself, Alejandro. Hey guys, how are you? Um, I am the artistic director for David's Beautiful People. Uh, I've been there for a little over 13 years now, and I'm also a brand educator for Wall of Professionals. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Um, so we, uh, we're talking, we're going to start up today by talking about uh, resilient hairdressers surviving COVID. I would like to know uh, how COVID has impacted your life as a human. Oof, that's like a big one. So when I think of the word resilient, it's just like survival, you know, and I think for everybody, it's probably different. But for me, I guess I had a really strong work ethic when I was behind the chair 24 seven. And my responsibility to keep myself afloat was just as hard how hard I worked. And so when COVID hit, um, I had just recently become um, the artistic director for David's. And it was not only that, but the livelihood of the other stylists in the salon that looked up to me to help pave the way to help keep education and so on. They came to me for everything. So my responsibility just doubled and it kind of got overwhelming because for me, I can shove things aside. I can multitask and put things in the back burner. But I think when it came to um, making sure that I was teaching myself new things, that I was learning how to communicate with people properly and to put my personal things aside and be able to deal with, you know, just regular salon duties, you know, being, you know, the director, I feel like that was just a lot of pressure. So I think for me, I was a lot of, I was always stressed. You know, I got home and I could never sleep. I was um, going, I had insomnia, going to bed late, you know, just processing things, writing sticky notes and books and notes. And like, I just was constantly going. And even on my downtimes, I would spend at my parents' house and you could see my brain was just working. And even though I was in a great mood, I never was present because I always got stuck of like doing five facets of my life. And the, but the good thing about it is, to today it's I've been able to like be numb to certain things and then really push myself to stay focused so I mean I think resilient comes with being an octopus you know and being able to dabble in all the different things like something you're working on uh something that's uh, constantly fixing and then something that's coming in you know and then being able to do those things and then have your two top hats on behind the chair and director so um I think it's it's a not a talent, I think it's something that can be acquired like as far as like a, um, a skill, you know? Um, but writing things down and keeping myself focused has been something that I've prided myself on, but I mean, I'm human and I'm like, I'm not God, you know, but I just know that it's been stressful. <laughs> When you say not being able to numb yourself, that I would, you know, some people's man stress manifests in numbness, but I'm, assume, I'm thinking that that's not what you're talking about. Is well, it's, it's a twofold. So I think when it comes to me personally, um, I am a person that can just shut things off quickly. Um, but when it comes to other people and how they affect me um, or how I'm responsible in a sense for that interaction, it's something that I can't shut off. But when it comes to like, we we're talking about COVID, it's just that pandemic to me, it was just like, all I could see was I've got to keep working. And even though things around me were falling apart and people were losing, I just, in my mind, I was just like, shut it off and just hit it. And I kind of, that's what I mean by gotcha. just staying focused. Gotcha. And did you have anybody uh, reach out to you and ask, uh, like, when I think of um, staying busy, I'm the, I, it's funny you say that because I'm very similar in that uh, when, when everything with COVID kind of happened, all I could think of is what am I, what, what can I do to get out ahead of this? And, um, and every single time a problem came up with, you know, that I hadn't thought of or hadn't foreseen or was a new challenge that I'd never experienced before, uh, I would think, how can I take care of this? How can I handle this? Some people that I work with and other hairdressers that I know, they were kind of like not feeling like they knew what to do. If they were looking for something, they're like, I don't know what to do. Did you have anybody come at come to you and ask you if you had any advice or anything like that um, about, you know, giving them something to do, maybe not like how to deal with their stress, but like, Hey, give me something to do. I'm busy or not really. I mean, yes, I think 
especially on social platforms, I was always messaged and asked like, what are you doing to keep busy? How are you keeping your head on strong? How are you staying focused? Like what things are you working on behind off the chair, you know? And I think that was the main thing. It's like, I feel like there's like five pillars in your life, right? And I won't go into all of them, but basically one is like, it's your cash money, it's your flow. And then it's your mental health. And those two, I think were the most important ones to me because uh, with mental health comes like physical fitness, eating healthy, all those things, getting rest, trying to at least. And um, so when they, when they come to me, they're like, what should you do? I'm like, well, find something that you love doing that brings you joy. And I, it doesn't have to be hair because I think there are some hairdressers who live to do hair and some hairdressers that are, are, are just doing hair, you know? And um, I feel like, and you lose yourself in all that process, especially for now, because all you think about is work, work, work. So I always tell them, find something that you love doing. Like I love spending time with my family. It's something that is not uh, amounted to money in my pocket, but it regenerates me and I love to give back. And so that was one thing I said, like, I spent time doing that. And then I love going to the gym, the gym or riding the bike or doing something physical because I'm incapable sometimes of expressing um, my emotions because I do set, shut myself off. So when I go to the gym and I sweat it and make myself break, it actually allows me to open up. So I said, usually something physical and find something that you love doing. And then nine times out of 10, they'll come back to me like, you know what? I went for a bike ride or I just sat in the park or I, I drew something and I painted it and I put it on my wall. You know, um, I, I think the, sometimes the simplest things are the things that kind of bring you back to you. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I love that. I, it sounds, I like how you're, you're talking about uh, things you can do to keep busy are the same thing as healthy habits. And so like, if you, maybe if you had healthy habits before, you know, maybe it's time to get back to them. Uh, and if you didn't have healthy habits, it's it might be time to um, bring them back. And then in, on top, uh, on top of that, you know, finding a hobby or something like that could be something like if you're not like you said, I think you're actually right about hair. Some hairdressers are just not, you know, living for hair. They, uh, they do it for work. And so maybe like, maybe all those online classes could get a little boring or something, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, but I think that that's good. I think finding, finding healthy habits and keeping yourself busy. I like that. Uh, so I think that you kind of crossed over the barrier when I asked you about uh, COVID impacting your life as a human into a stylist. I can tell that, um, your, your work and your, your role is a big part of uh, your life. Um, was there any impact to you as a stylist, say even behind the chair, uh, you know, dealing with customers, uh, dealing with friends, uh, anything, coworkers, anything like that? You know, one of the hugest things I think for me is like, I am such a people person and like, I'm a hugger. And I guess I, I, I'm like probably 99% of the hairdressers that you wear your heart and your sleeve and like, I, my clients are my family. So when I would see them, I would either kiss them, hug them, handshake them, whatever it was. And it was like an exchange of energy. And I feel like when this hit, not only was it interaction was minimalized, it just felt like I really couldn't do my job the way I wanted to because I was being held back. And um, so that to me was like, like taking something personal away from me. So I just, I learned to um, be actually more professional. And honestly, I'm not saying that I'm not, but I, you know, when I work for a while and we do things and we do, oh, you know, you, you, there's a standard, but, and an etiquette, you know, but I think with even salon life and then being in this position of the director, I feel like it kind of pushed me back some and, but I've allowed to grow from it. But as far as my weakness goes, I said like, just not being able to like hug your client hello and, yeah. or just say, you know, and just even just touch them. It's just like, everybody's on edge. So um, you kind of just have to, take a step back and just smile from a distance and learn how to smile with your eyes or <laughs> hand signals. Cause I'm telling you how many times you look at a client, you're like, you're so excited, but you know, nothing moves up here. So I'm always like, you know, like this or like doing a, like a, a finger movement because I'm so energetic behind the chair. And I mean, honestly, like people can hear my laugh from inside the door out. And it's just like, it's almost like putting a muzzle on me. And I'm like, my whole life is this, you know? So if you can't smile at someone, it's been kind of challenging, but I've, I've learned to be a chameleon and adapt to make people giggle. So I have, uh, that's funny. I, I feel like I mastered the uh, lingering smile, like just, <laughs> just in case, just in case the customer would like say they're walking by and they're like, bye Robert. And I'll smile, but I'll keep the smile on my face just in case they didn't see it the first time. 
And I'm like, I catch myself lingering, smiling behind the mask. I'm like, okay, I can stop that now. Yeah, they can't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> they can't see anything. Uh, what do you mean when you said uh, you're more professional? I thought that was curious. I, um, I'm curious to know what you mean by that. You said so, you found yourself. Oh yeah, more. yeah. Sorry about that. I um, I, uh, being able to deliver, especially like this, for example, even online and zooming, like being able to keep the message clear. Um, being able to deliver it with um, respect, I guess, in a sense, and, and, and straight to the point, it's kind of like being muzzled. You know, how can you deliver something like this and get your point across and being successful? And I feel like for me, I always added a lot of emotion into um, everything I did. And it sometimes, especially in my career earlier, uh, educating, it took the, the, how should I say, it took the level of professionalism, I guess, a little too carefree, you know? Um, and especially if I'm working for myself, that's one thing, but if I'm working for a manufacturer such as well or, or those sense, like they wanna see you have like charisma and, and talent and be happy and funny because it's all about the delivery and connecting with people. But in a sense, there's a point where you just have to hold your head up and you have to be able to like, you know, just be looked up to. And I think that's, the fine line of where I've learned to grow from was I can still be funny and cute and whatever, but at the same time too, it's like you're there to do a job and people so, are coming to you to, to, to go for your, to learn from your talent or learn from your skills. And, you know, you got to learn to draw the line. Now, even the direct, as the director, it's like, I've been a stylist there for so many years and I've been like, haha, you know, whatever. But now it's like, they are seeing me in a different light and I need to pull that weight and I need to sustain that for them so that they can respect me. Um, because it's, it's difficult. People that are working in the chair for 50 years now have to look to me. And so I feel like that is something that you have to uh, humble yourself for and learn to, you know, there's a place and time for everything. That's super good. Do you, um, just because it's on my mind, uh, before I ask you the next question, uh, do you find that, um, actually I'll just share it. My feeling is when I think of professional, I think of, uh, like I used to be able to hug and like, give a handshake and, you know, have like more of a friendly, like uh, vibe with my uh, guests. But, but I feel like in absence of that, I feel like I need to be more polished and more a concierge. Like if I was a concierge, right. I feel like if I don't do that, then I feel like because there's no touch, I feel like the service level goes down. It's almost like, I feel like I have to make up for, it. I don't know. Do you feel that way or not really? Uh, I do. So I, I feel like, especially when it comes to the word I was looking for before was polish. So you nailed it. Okay. So refining yourself um, with ways of communication, right? It is a way to, is, is hand movements, is directing, is providing a service like a beginning, a middle and an end. And if something is cut off, then you have to deliver it in a different way, you know, um, especially if this is our huge point totally. of communication. So I feel like clients, but will look for that they'll look for you to guide them and they feel lost because they're still stuck in their head but there's those three type of clients that walk through the front door the ones that you hug the ones you handshake and the ones you just say hello how are you so i think even dealing with people from afar now you just have to learn to be able to do those three types of clients that walk through the door, the door with being able to you know delegate and bring them through because it is it's like they want to still be wowed they want to still have uh, almost like a show but still want to have great hair and a good time while they're, while they're there and not think about Absolutely. the nation's pandemic. Absolutely. Um, all right, cool. This is awesome. Um, what, uh, just to like wrap up a little bit here, what advice do you have for anyone going through any sort, anything you went through or anything similar or even just different, like on a level of stress and dealing with, uh, you know, feeling all the things that we talked about, um, what is what is your what was your advice to them? You can give me one personal and one one as a human and one as a stylist, uh, or tricky, or not. Tricky. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, I'm the one that lives for hair, so everything actually goes together. Um, okay. But like I said, I feel is to find something that reminds you of who what you who you are, you know. And, and why you do the things you do. I think in times like this, I think finding a group of people, could be one, could be 50, that you find that bring you joy. 
you know, and that give you all the needs that you need fulfilled. And I feel like because this is not about hair, it's not about, it's about the world being able to sustain itself in its own misery, you know? So I think whether it be work related, have a confidant, someone you can look up to that you can talk to on the regular. And then somebody in your personal life, I feel like, like for me, it's my mom and my dad where I can go or my niece, I can you go someone close that you surround yourself with that sometimes you don't even need to talk. You can just marinate, you know? Um, mental health is huge in this overcoming battle because without a clear mind, you really can't plan for the future. And I feel like there's times where I am very overwhelmed with so many things. And when I, when I stop, it's, and I just shut everything off. It's kind of when I have an opportunity or something clear comes in, I go, maybe I should try this avenue. Or I remember they mentioned I should probably apply for this or what opportunities can I find within the industry that might help me behind the chair, which might bring me some more money. You know, um, I think it's those still moments. So find someone personal, find someone professional, always talk it out, never be by yourself, write everything down. And then, you know, when you have that clear mind, figure out how you want to use that. Nice. You know? Look at that. I love that. That's amazing. I'm gonna put that. <laughs> I'm put that in quotes. Is like your uh, is your quote right there. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this was so awesome. I'm um, really glad to have you and sharing your uh, yeah. Thanks, story. Man. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I look forward to next time. You got it. I appreciate you. All right. See you later. All right. See you.